Okay, today we're going to be making some sodium silicate gel. <coughs> we'll make it out of three ingredients. Uh, the first one is sodium hydroxide, better known as lye. You can use crystal drain opener and stuff like that. The second ingredient is actually going to be... Uh, what's in these packets? Uh, silica gel. But we're not going to use this. We're going to use this. Meow. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Uh, kitty litter crystals. Is, they're made out of uh, silica gel. And what we want to do is melt this into the lye after we dissolve the lye in water. Okay, we're going to start out by, we're going to use our scale. I don't know if you can see that or not. We ain't got it on yet. We want 200 grams of sodium hydroxide. Oh, I'm a little over. Take some of that out. Okay, we're at 200 milligrams of uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay. We'll set that aside. I didn't get another bowl. Let me get another bowl. Okay, we're back. And we're going to measure out 300 grams of, of uh, silica gel. Excuse me, you want to get the 100% kitty litter. You don't want to get um, the kitty litter that's got scent to it and all that. Should have reversed the bowls. And you might want to use some gloves doing this because that lie can eat you up. The blue crystals will just give it a funny tint. Somebody said make it pink. I've watched a lot of videos on this. I'm not the only one. Yeah, my birds are happy. I'm not happy. All right, that's just about 300 grams right there. All right, I'm going to move this outside so we can work on this. Okay, the other ingredient was 500 milligrams. Uh, not milligram, Milliliters of water. Uh... And you want to do this in a well ventilated area. <clears throat> it's going to get kind of hot, so I'm going to put it on this brick. Uh, again, that's 200 grams of lye or sodium hydroxide, 300 grams of silica gel of some sort. They also come in desiccant packs, and 500 milliliters of water. And you'll probably thin this later. And you want to use, preferably, a wooden spoon because if you use a metal spoon, chances are the metal is going to interact with the sodium hydroxide. And when the sodium hydroxide gets hot, it might melt a plastic spoon. So let's, let's uh, pour this in slowly and make sure you do this in a well ventilated area. Stir it in slowly and mix it up till it dissolves. It's going to warm up. You might see some steam coming off of it. It's about 65 degrees today, so we'll see. I got my furnace going over there. I'm melting out some uh, <coughs> wind blowing it back in the face. I'm melting out some castings that I'm working on. We got that all on there. So we want to mix that up slowly. You can probably see some steam coming off of it now. I can sure feel the heat.
And if you can, use a stainless steel pot. I suppose you'd be alright using a stainless steel utensil, but most utensils aren't stainless steel. I'm probably going to put this over the furnace too and finish melting the uh, silica gel. Alright. Add the silica gel. A little at a time, it's going to foam a little bit. It's kind of windy, so I'm just going to rake this in here. You see that foam? I'm going to have some debris left from the kitty litter. If you use 100% desiccant gel, silica gel, it would probably be less debris and you see it's clumping up like that you want to slow down and let that melt you want it to dissolve and after you make this you're probably going to thin it down because the stuff gets hard with uh, co2 you use it for casting in sand you take sand and mix it with this form your mold harden it with co2 or let it harden over a few days <clears throat> Demold it. Put the mold back together and uh, for your project. Okay, we're gonna have to move over to the uh, to the furnace over there. Get this to heating up a little bit more. So let's move over to the furnace. Okay, you can probably see my my casting molds down in there. We'll put this over the heat. We don't want to get too hot. We want it to heat up enough to melt all that gel down. We got more to go in here. I think I might be running out of gas. <clears throat> Get some more Saturday. It's Tuesday, by the way. Yeah. Kind of breathing them live fumes. Probably shouldn't have done that, but I'm an impatient old man. Probably gonna put some more water in there. 500 milligram, milligrams is a start, you know. Let me get some more water. Because you're gonna thin it out anyway after you're done. be able to tell when it's done because when you pick up the spoon when all the silica's melted it'll it'll drip off and hang it'll be all sticky you're supposed to use distilled water but I'm using tap water because they I've seen a lot of videos and they say it doesn't make a difference so 
I guess we're going to see. Seems to be just about all melted. Might be got a little thin right now, but that's the way it needs to be because if it's too thick, it'll harden up quicker and it'll get a skin on it as it sits there because the CO2 in the air will cause it to uh, thicken up, harden up. Let's see how we're looking. A lot of foam. The drips aren't really coagulating like I'd hoped it the wood. I got it too, too thin right this minute. We just let it sit here and heat up a little bit and evaporate some of the water off. Finish melting the last of these crystals. But you see how it's kind of a pink looking color? That's because of the blue crystals that was in it interacting with the lye. If you take this and mix it with sand, like I said, make your mold, whatever you're working on, you can inject it with uh, CO2 or just let it set for a few days until it hardens. It'll soak up CO2 out of the atmosphere. And you can demold it. Take what you were going to make the mold of out, put the mold back together. <clears throat> Pour your mold, nice and hard. I think I'm running out of propane, which is fine. Seems to be thickening up a little bit. I'll be back as soon as the thickens up. Okay, it's still kind of thin, but I'm going to thin it out anyway. When I put it, I'm put it in this milk jug, and uh, you want it to be as full as you can so it doesn't harden up in the uh, the jug. So we're going to let it cool off, and then I'm going to pour it in this jug. That's how you make sodium silicate gel, so that you can uh, make your own molds with sand. You can use it as an adhesive if you leave it nice and thick. Um, try to keep a torch going over here, but <laughs> the wind keeps blowing it out. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, it will it will adhere two pieces of steel together nicely. People also, I wouldn't suggest using kitty litter for it, but people also use sodium silicate to seal head gasket brakes in their car by putting it in their water um, but that's the full one one on it uh, I'm probably gonna strain it through a coffee filter just to make sure there's no debris in it it probably don't matter huh <laughs> and pour it in this jug once it cools so I got about a half gallon jug I got about a little less than a quarter out of that that was 200 grams of sodium hydroxide 300 grams of silica gel and around 700 milliliters of water that's a little more than a pint of water it's probably 20 ounces that's a 20 ounce bottle if you were using a soda bottle so uh, yeah and I can mix that with sand and cast um, objects in it. In case you were wondering what I was casting in those molds in the uh, um, furnace, that's what I was casting. I just gave them an acid bath. You need good polishing. 
That one didn't get a full cast. Might melt that one back down. That's like a snake. Huh? That's like a, I don't know, mechanical. They had a couple of air bubbles and it might melt that one back down too. But that's what I was doing. I was making those rings out of silver. I uh, hope you found this video informative. If you like it, give me a thumbs up um, and share. Y'all have a great day.